The New Deal has been created by the globalization process. It's uh, still being created by it. In fact, it's full of contradictions. And one of the main ones is that uh, uh, whatever has happened to big nation nationalism, small nationality politics, the emergence of new nations and states is, if anything, accelerating <laughs> under, under globalization. And uh, uh, this is what makes some kind of uh, new deal, new arrangement necessary. It's a fundamental point which tends to be taken for granted in the contemporary world, is that um, to be serious, to have bigger is generally better. And, uh, uh, and things can only be seriously achieved on a relatively large scale. The general age of development, when bigger was, on the whole, necessary and a bit better, is past. It may have been required to develop the capitalist social order. But with globalization, this has changed. Uh, the, these conditions no longer apply. The position of the Scots is quite important because uh, uh, they are an example of uh, how things in a particular conjuncture could go, go either way, you know? Could go, I mean, uh, it could, uh, there are still a lot of people very uneasy about the change and uh, part of them longing for the cringe, actually, you know, and the safety and <laughs> security and, so, and uh, others who, um, having uh, advanced a bit along the road to, towards self-confidence, you know, want more of it, and, and, and the only way to get it is to move in the direction of full self-government. This is a Dutchman's idea. It, 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 it's a Dutch uh, um, social historian called Elko Runia at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands, who uh, tried to convey the same point as, uh, as I've been making with a, a humorous metaphor, really. He says, we're all in the same ship, yeah. That's globalization. <laughs> and uh, one problem of the ship is that um, once you're there, once everyone's aboard it, uh, the, the whole, you, you realize that most of the, the, the freight, the, the, you know, the human cargo, like stowaways, as it were, you know, it finds themselves on the, the great noble vessel forging ahead with the big boys on the bridge. And, and uh, all these um, marginalized, or secondary, or uh, you know, in one way or another, uh, uh, unrepresented uh, lower, 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 lower deck uh, passengers are coming up on deck. No, the wretches are appearing on deck and <laughs> saying, "What about us?" <laughs> and uh, what they're doing, in a way, of course, is demanding their tickets. The old system, the 1707 system, has well, it's breaking up breaking down. The blood has drained out of British identity in that sense. And uh, so people have lost their confidence in Britain and at the same time, in exactly the same period, been struck by the tide of globalization uh, in order not to be carried away and become anonymous, as it were, an anonymous part of the new global <laughs> but You've got to speak up. <laughs> it's now or never if you, if you don't. And uh, I think that uh, uh, Scottish opinion, Scottish sensibility has caught on to this clearly and uh, uh, in, in ways that uh, don't necessarily exactly match party politics, you know, uh, uh, whether Labourite, nationalist, anti nationalist, conservative, or whatever. Uh, it's a more general change of climate where um, it's recognized in a, a matter-of-fact fashion. People are weighing up the pros and cons of uh, staying in the United Kingdom or distancing yourself from it or, or, or striking out on a new path or you know, being in and out of Europe and so on. And um, I think that that, that note of sober, matter-of-fact realism is, is the thing which, uh, you know, uh, is, is most new and different.